Everybody, welcome. Welcome to New Life Church. Glad you are here today. My name's Darren, uh, pastor here, and uh, excited about today. Glad you're tuning in. And uh, so let's start. Let's start with a word of prayer. Let's, let's pray together. God, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we have to, uh, to come together, even in, this, even in this way. We pray that uh, during this time, God, we would, we would know your presence. We would, we would know your presence through your word. As, as we worship, we pray that you, by your spirit, would draw us closer to you during this time, God, as we, as we give ourselves to you and pray, have your way, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's listen now. Let's join the worship team as they lead us in worship. Your house, better is one day in your 
I pray our winter series into, into January and February. Uh, really looking forward to this series that we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. We're going to be jumping into to different passages in the Bible, all throughout the Bible. There's so much teaching on prayer in the Bible. Jesus taught on prayer, gave parables on prayer. Uh, we see the early church prayed. Uh, then, then the Psalms, all kinds of different kinds of prayer we find in the Psalms. We're gonna be digging into all that uh, over the next few weeks. The, the, the goal of the series is that, is that for each one of us, that we would move forward in prayer. Where, wherever you are right now, that you'd move forward. And that would be true individually, that would be true uh, corporately for us as a church, that we would be more of a praying church. And so this morning, today, we're going to be starting, we're going to be starting with the question, why don't we pray as we'd like? For many of us, why don't we pray as we like? We're going to dig into some reasons on that. And then we're going to jump over to Matthew chapter 6. And just with, with one point that we're going to find from Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, that'll lead to a, a homework assignment to a challenge. Uh, so let's go now to installment one. Of I pray. God, we begin this series by doing, by doing the very thing that some of us struggle with, uh, by, by praying to you. At times, we don't realize what a privilege it is to do this, to, to pray. And it is totally by your grace and by your mercy that we can. And so by that same grace, we ask that you would help us to pray. Whether that's beginning to pray for some of us or, or growing deeper in prayer for others, help us to pray. And may your spirit, through your word, teach us, reshape us, grow us for your honor, for your glory, for your kingdom's sake. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, prayer is incredibly important. Of all the ways that we can exercise our faith, prayer is the top of the list. And we know that, I bet. Yet many of us struggle with prayer. We don't pray as we'd like to. We, we would say that, that, that we're not satisfied with our prayer life. And why is that? Well, let's start, let's start our time here just by seeing if we can uncover a few possible reasons why we may struggle with prayer. If you're taking notes, we'll go through three reasons why we may struggle in this area. So first reason, first reason, let's call it this. First reason, self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency, we depend on ourselves. On our own autonomy. We, we rely on ourselves. We don't pray for daily bread because the pantry's full. The fridge is full. And if it's not full, it's, it's a 10-minute drive to, to Sobeys, to Costco. And, and what do we do? We, we refill the fridge. We have jobs. We have money. We have family. We have we have government assistance. We have our health until we don't. And then we pray. When our self-sufficiency, depending on self, when that caves in. Jesus, in the final book of the Bible, in Revelation, he speaks to seven churches, seven letters to seven churches. And in his seventh letter to the church, uh, the church called Laodicea, he says this to them. He says, he says, you say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and I don't need a thing. And that kind of, that kind of captures it. This self-sufficiency. Um, I'm good. I, I've got this. Uh, I'm depending. I'm relying on myself. 
Well, Jesus taught a lot about prayer. And in one of the parables, he tells about prayer. He talks about, he talks about uh, to pray and not give up. And we're going to be looking at, looking at that in the coming weeks. But, 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 but because, because self-sufficiency can creep in. It can creep into our day-to-day lives where we depend on ourselves and not God. And so we're less apt to pray. That's one reason. Uh, another reason would be this. Reason number two, uh, why prayer could be a struggle for some, is busyness. We're, we're busy. It's, it's not hard for some that, that, that you start the day running, uh, you, you know, off to work, uh, uh, stuff at home, uh, uh, appointments, unexpected things in life, and, and, and maybe you don't stop till, till it's late and you hit the bed and you just go, go, go all day with things and stuff and commitments. And, and, and it's not that, listen, it's, it's not that those things are bad. They're probably good things that we do. We're, we're busy doing good things. It's kind of like Martha. You, that story, that, that uh, kind of well-known story in the Bible from Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha. And, 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 and the story goes, Jesus and his disciples uh, come into to Mary and Martha's house. And, and, and their brother Lazarus is there as well. But, but Martha, man, she's, she's taking care of things, right? She's, she's got the appetizers on. She's, she's tending the door. She's stirring the pots. She's, she's busy, man. She's busy, busy, busy. And there's Mary. And what's she doing? She's, she's sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Martha is, is ticked off. She, she's so ticked off, she won't even speak to Mary. She goes to Jesus and, 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 and says to him, tell her to get busy. And, and look how Jesus responds. It's, it's in Luke 10, uh, uh, verse 41. This is how Jesus responds to Martha here. He says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. In fact, if we were to go back uh, just a couple of verses from that, uh, that, that Luke records, Luke records that Martha was distracted by her many tasks, her preparation. Martha was distracted. Distracted from what? Or not what, but Who? Jesus was in the living room, and Martha was, was, was busy doing other things and missing it. Huge, huge lesson here. I, I, I know most of us are busy, and, and we don't want another thing added to a to-do a to list. Uh, but, but, but consider this. That, that, that have, we said, have we said yes to the wrong things, even good things, and it's distracted us from Jesus? You know, hobbies, sports, recreation, work, those aren't bad things. But it's when we take them and, and we give them a higher priority than they should have. That, that they have greater urgency than our faith walk, than, than our prayer. Then, then that's when something good turns into something that, that isn't so good. So, so understand, understand what, what we're doing here in, in, in this teaching here. We're not, it, it's not to see prayer as an obligation or, 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 or something that could add guilt for not doing. It, it's not that. It's, it's that we would see prayer as something that we get to do. Something that, 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 man, I wake up in the morning, I can't wait to do it. Or I, 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 at the end of the day, I, I get to pray. Not as an obligation, not as something to feel guilty about, but as a privilege. So, uh, so self-sufficiency, busyness, 
and, and now let's, let's look at, there's all kinds of reasons we could list here, but let's just look at, let's just look at one more. Uh, number three, we don't pray because we don't know how. Interesting. Let, let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 uh, for a few minutes. Matthew chapter 6, we'll start at verse 9. Words of Jesus here. And he says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Uh, most, probably all of you, would recognize this as the Lord's Prayer. There's a, there's a shorter version of it in, in Luke chapter 11, where it's prefaced by one of Jesus' followers coming up to him and saying, teach us to pray. And that's how Jesus responds. In fact, they, they couldn't ask a better guy than Jesus. Jesus teaches much on prayer, but he also prays. He also himself prays. He just didn't teach it. He, he, he prayed all the time. I mean, just started making a list here. I mean, he, before he, he raised Lazarus from the, from the dead, before he raised him, he prayed. He prayed three times in the garden before his arrest. He prayed three times on the cross. It's recorded. Father, forgive them. Uh, why have you, Lord, why have you abandoned or forsaken me? Into your hands I entrust my spirit. He prayed at his, his baptism. He, he prayed when he was 40 days in the wilderness. Uh, he prayed before feeding the 5,000 and, and then before feeding the 4,000 as well. He prayed at his transfiguration. prayed before he chose the 12 disciples. He prayed a lot. In fact, Hebrews 5, 7 uh, sums it up. Just look at this for a minute. Hebrews 5. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. I bet many of you are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, perhaps you grew up reciting it. Uh, perhaps, there was, perhaps there was a time where you, you, you said it every morning or, or, or at home or... I can remember, I can remember being in public school, and and every morning you'd start with O Canada, and the Lord's Prayer. Um, we're familiar with this prayer, but there's a lot more to the Lord's Prayer than just reciting it. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's bad to recite the Lord's Prayer. It's, it's good to recite the Lord's Prayer. It's just that there's more than that. The Lord's Prayer is to serve as a template. It's to serve as, as, as teaching here. Here's, here's the one thing I want you to get today. Here, here's the one thing right here. That Jesus teaches us this template, this, this pattern, and the pattern he begins with is by saying prayer should begin with God. Prayer begins with God. The beginning of prayer is focusing on God. Uh, his glory, his honor, his kingdom, his, his name, exalting him above all else. Prayer begins by worshiping God first. Right? How does Jesus begin? This is the template. Our Father who is in heaven hallowed or, or holy is your name his name is to be honored in all the world that 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 all the world would see his name as as great not to be not to be cursed but to see his name as great and holy and this is the pattern that jesus is giving us but too often we tend to approach god we, we tend to instead of approaching god for God himself, we approach him with a shopping list. Like we're getting up on Santa's lap and, and, and requesting, 
three or four things we'd like to see under the tree. And then we move on. That, that, can, be our, that can be our tendency in prayer. And our prayers are more often about us, about our kingdom, not his. Uh, our prayers are about what's good for us, what would make our name great. That, that, that people want people to follow us or, or like us. Prayer, the pattern that we're seeing here and giving us this pattern, Jesus is calling us to, to reshape, to shift how we pray. And prayer starts with God. He's the focus. Jesus' teaching, be about God first. Start there. He sits supreme. He's in control. Even at times when it doesn't perhaps feel like he's in control, he's in control. And this reminds us that he is. It reminds us that he's first. He's greater than our needs and wants. Are, are our needs and wants important? Yes, absolutely. They're important. But he's first. Um, look down in Matthew 6. If you were to look down, down to verse 33, it, the verse reads, Seek first his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. That's, that's the Lord's prayer right there. Seek first his kingdom. Seek God for God himself. I, I, mean, I mean, think about it. That, that, that we, get to, we get to know the one who created the cosmos. We get to know the, the creator, the sustainer, the one who loves us more than we can realize. Uh, maybe, maybe this is just me. Maybe this is just me. This, this, is how I, this is how I like to think about it. Say, okay, it, it's probably Sunday. You're watching this. Sunday and so 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 Sunday afternoon for for many of us Sunday afternoon is Sunday afternoon football and and, and so so say this afternoon um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing this afternoon with their with their uh, man their all star for all time quarterback Tom Brady and say I have Tom Brady's cell number. I've got his number, I've got his number, and so I'm, 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 this afternoon I'm watching the game, and, and there's Tom, you know, making plays, sitting, he's sitting on the sideline right now, and I say, you know, I think I'll give Tom a call. I, I got a couple things to, you know, kind of tell him, so I, I'm just going to give Tom a call, so I've got his number, and, 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 so, and so I dial his number, and, 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 and he picks up, and, and so we're, we're, we're talking, and, and he said, hey, Tom, you know, it's, it's Darren here. And he's like, oh, yeah, Darren, uh, good to hear from you. Good to connect. Go ahead. I'm listening. Right? I mean, <laughs> that's crazy, right? That, 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 that I'd get a direct line to, to, to him. Well, then <laughs> we get to directly connect with the one who created the universe. That's prayer. We get that. The one who keeps things together, who is, who is more than we can imagine. That we have direct access. Doesn't that blow your mind? That's prayer. God, God himself invites us to himself. He, he doesn't just exist to give us things but that we get him himself. Uh, let, let, me just, let me just reinforce that with, with one, more, uh, one more example here. Just, just, we'll reinforce it and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. But, but, but final example here is, is, you know, we've never looked at this story, I don't think, but, but the story of Job in the Bible. Some of you are familiar with it. The story of Job goes where, where Satan says to God, uh, this guy Job this guy, Job, the only reason Job worships you is because of what you give him. So everything that Job has is taken away. 
It's stripped away. And he's lost it all. He's, he's in mourning. He's torn his robe. He's, he shaved his head. He's, it says, Job fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job was honoring the name of the Lord. In chapter 13 of that book, he'll say, you know, even if he kills me, I will still hope in him. I will still worship him. The story of Job confronts the reader kind of, kind of with a, a deer in the headlights type of question. Is God plus nothing good enough? Is God plus nothing else enough? That we... Get him in prayer. You get God, but is he enough? It, is it possible that we struggle in our prayer lives because our prayers are more self-centered than God-centered? That, that, that we're far more concerned about us in the world than his place in the world we're putting ourselves first at? I just, could that be possible? He's first. That prayer starts with God. It's God-centered. So here's the homework. Here's your homework assignment for this week. Uh, and it's in two parts. For those, for those who struggle with, with prayer, and maybe there's a few of you, I don't want to overgeneralize, maybe there's a few of you who don't. And, and so, for sure. But, but for, for the many of us who do, uh, two things this week. Two things this week. One is this. To mark out a time to pray. Each day. To, to, to just designate. A, just, just, it could be just a few minutes. But mark out. Earmark a time where you pray. Don't, don't just leave it on the pile of good intentions. But set a time this week to pray. And then secondly, start that prayer with God first. To, to, take, to take a little bit of time and, and, and acknowledge God's attributes. To, to, to spend this, that, that, that first part of the prayer focused on Him and, and who He is. Uh, uh, maybe you look around and you look at something in nature. Maybe, maybe you just, something you'd be thankful for, but, but, but just acknowledge who God is. Start the prayer that way. Start with God. Start with God first. That's the challenge for this week. That's something. That's something I'd like for you to work on this week. And, and we'll we'll end it there. But we're gonna we're gonna move into a uh, w w with a with a worship song that I, I think will help um, will help as, as we respond uh, to this this morning. That we respond to this and and how God may be reshaping our lives. We'll listen to it now and then we'll come back on and we'll close with prayer. I trust you, I don't need 
possible reasons why we can struggle with prayer. Uh, Self-reliance, busyness, or maybe we struggle knowing how to pray. And so in Matthew 6, we learn today that prayer starts with God, that He's first, it's not us, by acknowledging Him first and His attributes. And so that's the homework, to set a time daily for prayer and for that prayer each day to start with God. I hope you'll take that challenge this week. I think you'll find it awesome and, um, and look forward to hearing how that, uh, that may bring change in, in your prayer life. Also, just a reminder, last week we talked about our 52-week challenge uh, through the New Testament in 52 weeks. That link is on the YouTube, um, is, is, is under uh, NLC, uh, Church Prospect Road. Right under that, uh, you'll see the link for the uh, for the 52 weeks in the New Testament. So uh, we're going to close with a word of prayer, and I'll pronounce I'll pronounce the uh, benediction. So uh, join with me in prayer here now. God, we God, we thank you for who you are, that you are our Creator, our Sustainer. Thank you that you are you are all powerful and you are all present. And we thank you for being with us here in this time. God, we also pause to lift up those who need your special touch this day, uh, those who need uh, your, your touch in a, in a, in a physical way for, for physical wellness. God, those who need encouragement and strength. God, we also pray. We pray for strength for our leaders, for those in places of responsibility. Uh, God, we pray for those whose workplaces are difficult right now for students who are uh, entering into a week of online learning. Uh, help them, we pray. And we thank you for your word today. Help us as we pray this week. And now to you, the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.